new ones, which is just about half the class. You know, I kind of basically told the story just a little bit that, you know, God wrote, I mean, God had men write the Bible. He told them what to say. And our first story was out of John. And John saw, I saw so many miracles. I walked and talked with Jesus. But the ones that I wrote down for you, and I think there's only about 9 or 11 that he wrote down, he says, but I wrote them down in order that you might know that he is the Son of God. These are the ones I chose. And so Jesus, when he came on this earth, he was preaching and teaching, but there was something that people didn't know about him, and they didn't know it because he looked like everybody else. But was he like everybody else? He was 100% man, so of course he looked like everyone else, but he was also 100% God. He was the creator of the heaven and the earth, and he wanted people to know that he, that he was the Messiah that had come down. Well, so he went to, we know he went to a what? A wedding, uh-huh. And uh, for some reason, we're not sure, but his mother must have been in charge of the refreshments. And uh, what happened? They, what? They ran out. And so she says, you know what? And Jesus didn't promise he was going to do anything, but she just said, hey, if he tells you to do anything, you do what he said. Now, I tell you something. He asked them to do something that was very labor intensive and very difficult. What was it? Yeah. yeah. You know, it was uh, six jars, 30, you know, 20 to 30. That was like, could have been 180 gallons of water. That was a lot of work. They didn't want water. They wanted what? Do you know when Jesus tells you to do something, what do you need to do? Because he has plans and thoughts that you don't have. And so then he told him to do something else that was difficult. He said, take this water, and he didn't say water, but just take this. Okay, I know it's water. And go draw some out and take it to the head guy in the feast. Did they? Uh-huh. And so what, what did the head guy, the servant poured it out, and, and, and what did they find out about it? Why it was the best they ever tasted. Why could Jesus do that? Well, he was the creator of the heaven and the earth to take water and turn it into wine. What was that? Oh, my gracious. And, of course, he came down for a very specific reason, and that was to take our sin away. And then remember that there was another man that came to Jesus, and what was his nickname? Nicodemus. His name was Nick, and so what was his real name? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. That's exactly right. And remember, he, he taught. I've studied... I know the Old Testament. I teach the people. And so he and, and his fellow Pharisees would teach the people. And, you know, there, there were a few people that showed up. But when Jesus would go out and teach, he wasn't a Pharisee. He hadn't studied at the best schools. And yet when he spoke, how many people came? Thousands. And so they thought, what? And so in the beginning, they thought that he had come from God. And so he goes to him, what time of the day? Night, uh huh. And so he has a question for him. And he says, We know, actually, the thing he says, that we know that you're come from God. And remember, Jesus knew what he really needed to know. He knew that Nicodemus needed to have this new birth, he needed to have that life that will live forever in heaven. And just being good, just following the rules. Teaching everybody, oh, you did that wrong. Oh, you did that wrong. Oh, you did that Teaching everybody else the rules isn't enough. You've got to have the new life. The number one question is, if you ask people, how do you get to heaven? What are they going to tell you? Uh -huh. Now, do you, does God want you to be good? Yeah, that's not how you get to heaven. But the minute you ask the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, he gives you this new life inside. And you know what the purpose of the new life and what he wants you to do? He says, I'm going to now create in you a new life. And the whole purpose is that you can do the good things that I have created you to be. So anyway, but Nicodemus didn't understand any of that. So he says, now remember, Nicodemus, there were snakes in the desert. They'd been there all the time, you know. You were walking through. You didn't see them. They didn't need to be. But then all of a sudden you disobeyed and they started biting you. And so the Bible tells us. Cried out to Moses. God said to Moses, Moses didn't know what to say. Go ahead and make a brown stone and put it on a pole. And what did they have to do in order to be over the poison snake bite that was in them? Just look. Just look. Just believe that all they had to do was, okay, Lord, you know, that snake, all right, 
oh look, didn't sound logical, didn't sound reasonable. Well, and you know what? It's the same thing with the Lord Jesus. He says, just as Moses lifted up that pole on the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him, he will not perish like they were from the snake bites, but they will have this eternal life. And so, and, and Nicodemus, we don't know exactly what his thoughts were afterwards, but three years later, what did he see? God, Jesus, lifted up. And so remember, he believed in him, and through his blood, he died on that cross, and he came alive again yeah. <laughs> for our sins. We may have mentioned that, came alive. Well, our story today is about Jesus. And um, he was down in Jerusalem. And if you don't have a map, it's okay. I, I do have a map. Oh, yes, there it is. So if you have one, you can use it. But you know, in my class, I didn't use a map. So you really can teach it just as well without a map. So I'll put the map up. But the way that you can do it just as well without a map is, and Israel is this way today. So Israel is, is this long country. And down here was where they would go in Jerusalem and offer sacrifices. And um, you know, guys, I must tell you something. Before I tell you what Jesus did, there's somebody that I do not want to ignore. Someone in our school I would ignore today. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to ignore Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about Eddie. <laughs> Eddie was ignored. <laughs> All right, Eddie. Oh, wow, Eddie. Gee, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Well, Eddie, you know, you just started school. How do you like school? Well, you know, I like it. But at our school, you have to know your place. You know, there's these three groups that are together, and you got to belong, and it's all based on the color of your skin. Now, guys, uh, the reason I use this script is because there was a young man, and we were taking him home, and he was in high school at one of our L.A. schools, and he just said, there are three groups, and he says, you don't cross the line. You, you know, and they'll have your back, but when you eat, and it was, it was the, the whites and the blacks and the Hispanics. And, it, and so he just said, you belong to one of the groups, and there's no such thing as not belonging. And uh, so, you know, we think we're going to integrate the schools, and it really doesn't work out. So that's why I use this with Eddie, because this is really what was happening. So anyway, Eddie, yes, uh, so uh, you don't belong to any of the groups? No, nope. I just decided I'm going to be nice to everyone. Oh, well, Eddie, I'm so proud you. Well, that reminds me of someone in our story today that was going to be nice to people that others didn't like. Okay, I remind you of someone in the story. Was it good? Yes, Eddie, it was very good. Whoa, finally, Eddie, the poster child. He didn't do something wrong this time. Oh, I'm so glad to be in the right. Yes, Eddie, you know what you're doing is really the right thing. And I'm going to tell you about the other person who did the right thing and just about what you were doing. Wow. Whoa. I'm so glad I came today. Whoa. Uh, hey, guys, i got to go. But uh, if you want to shake my hand afterwards, I'm right here for you. <laughs> Eddie, just uh, listen to the story. All right, all right, all right. got to go. Okay. Bye, bye everybody. <laughs> you know how we can go from being humble to prideful in seconds? <laughs> That's Eddie. I'm telling you. Wow.